There we go. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another day of the Daily Bee Schlenker, the live stream that you all know and love as a, a temporary name, a temporary place for us to come and hang out and chat with fantastic people in the LMB industry and outside of it doing some fantastic things. And today I have the pleasure of hanging out at Was You with Lisa Lloyd. Hey, Hello. Hey, <laughs> Welcome yeah. to our home. Yes, well, thanks for having me. This is great. Sure. It gets me out of my uh, my home studio office, if you will. Uh, up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, so, Tricia, can you hear us okay? Excellent, Jack, thank you very much. Good to see you guys. Thanks for jumping in and hanging out and uh, supporting me in this uh, new live stream. We've got a lot to talk about, actually. Uh, Lisa and I have already been chatting, and we're all chatted out. So I'll uh, <laughs> see you next you. time. Man, this was great. <laughs> no, that's a lie because uh, we could probably, yeah, we could probably talk about this stuff forever. Um, and, and we have killed some hours already talking about stuff, but we have a lot to talk about today. So uh, thank you all for being here, actually. Uh, first of all, thank you guys again for uh, supporting me and uh, in, in what I'm trying to do and bringing the community together as always and helping you guys get better at the work that you do in helping others get better at the work that they do. So we're going to be going a little bit off that script, a little bit, um, just, and a just a tiny bit, and talking, though, about how we can help your organization solve some really big problems that are a part of the industry that we are a part of. And so you guys just listen up really closely because some of this stuff may feel like it's not part of what we do. Uh, and feel free to drop it into the chat if you feel like we've gone way too off base. Um, but um, but, I, but I think we'll be good. And I think you guys are going to love listening to Lisa and hear her story and to hear more about um, why Was You was created and what it is that uh, they're currently trying to accomplish in the space. So let's start there and just have you introduce yourself. Well, um, with Was or with the... Uh Going back a little further than that. Well, let's start with just was. Let's start with today. Right? Right. So what are you doing today? So, and uh, in December, I joined the team at WASU uh, as a um, business development specialist working with um, large and small organizations on helping them with recruiting, with retaining, and uh, upskilling or reskilling employees for with regard to technology. So okay. WASU offers a uh, software developer full stack software developer education, as well as cybersecurity yep. and data science. Okay. Wow. So all of that stuff is what we talk about all the time, right? And what um, needs to happen and how we can get those folks trained up. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to get to it. But let's go back a little ways and let's figure out why you got to this point, right? Why? Yeah. What are the... What are the things in your life, in your past, that all of a sudden made you realize that this would be a good place for you to be? And why does it even matter to anybody who might be listening? Right? Anyway, right? Yeah. Um, we all have our stories, our career paths. Exactly. Work out. We've been actually calling them origin stories when oh, I interview okay. people. Yeah. Right. So it's like getting understanding everybody's origin story kind of helps you know set the groundwork for sure. what Get we're going to talk things. about. Yeah. Uh, so when I was 23, I had my first idea for an invention called the French Twister, and I invented, patented, and licensed that to Scunsy. It went on to do about 20 million in sales. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of cool. That was easy. I think I want to do that again. <laughs> so um, over the following uh, 15, 20 years, I had uh, accumulated a, a total of 12 patents across uh, eight products, and primarily inventing patenting and licensing them. And then as a result of the success that I had, was contracted by many companies to help them build intellectual property type processes inside their organization, as well as working with independent inventors. Gotcha. Um, I fell into it because I loved problem solving. Um, my mother, I, I was, I'm an only child uh, with a single mom. And so I was kind of left to my own devices to figure yeah. shit out. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, On sure. my own. It's the internet. You can All do that. the time. <laughs> Leave. You see the red mark come across my face. Um, yes, Tricia, and she is the French twister. Yep. 
That's it. I, well, not me personally, but yes, I am a French dresser. <laughs> Um, most of them were hair accessories. So I had okay. the French Twister, Weave and Wave, Bobby Sticks, Soft Paws, were all hair accessories between Scumsy Goody, Vidasa Stan. Uh, I had a CO2 powered airbrush, which was for body art, henna paint, tattooing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, tanning okay. spray, nail spray, that sort of thing. Um, that was fun. And then the, the most recent or last, Possibly last ever. <laughs> Not doing this again. I don't know. I'm, I'm too smart for my own good now because I know all the reasons that it could go wrong. So it's a lot more intimidating than when I was young and dumb enough to think, oh, I could do that. I could totally do no that. No problem. Right? Yeah. Ah, God, the ignorance was bliss. It is. Yeah, we love that. So I, I, the last one was called Treasure Chest Pets, TC Pets, which was a line of stuffed animals with secret compartments inside. Oh, and that cool. landed me on Shark Tank. I was on okay. one with that. Um, and I earned the coveted investment of uh, Damon John and Barbara Corcoran. Oh, fun. I went on to work with Damon on several other projects uh, post Shark Tank. Okay. And then I kind of found myself in a position of, I was getting a little bored, to be honest with it. Um, mm -hmm. And then TC Pets, because it was during the whole real estate crash of 2010, mm. 2012. I launched in 2010. <laughs> and so by 2012, I had it in 400 stores. Yep. It just wasn't profitable. I was selling them like crazy, but the margins just weren't there. So okay. we shut that down and I started to regroup. I began working with uh, startups in, in New Orleans for about five years. I was the entrepreneur in residence working with startups. And I just, again, I love problem solving and I love entrepreneurship. Yeah. And so when I moved back to Arizona a couple of years ago, I was looking at a lot of different options. I, I was working with some organizations on some front end innovation, but I saw in December this opportunity to partner with WASU and uh, provide enterprise solutions to this enormous problem facing tech talent and all of the challenges that revolve around that. And yeah, and what we're going to be talking about. So uh, let me just answer a quick question here before we jump into that deep conversation. Trisha, yes, I was trying to get somebody uh, to speak at TLDC 19 from WASU. And um, somebody introduced me to somebody else and uh, it, it just, we never got connected. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, somebody I went to the ATD conference in Palm Beach. Okay. And I uh, cannot remember her name from Amazon. She said, oh, oh Myra. Myra. She said, you need to know Brent. There you go. That's where the connection is, Tricia. Myra got us connected. <laughs> no, Tricia, all you have to do is know Myra, and then you know everybody. <laughs> One she, degree of separation. Yes, because she knows famous people. So just get connected with Myra, and it's all good. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's uh, let's jump into this. So um, transitioning out of um, who you are and your background and your your history and kind of what brought you here, there is this bigger problem that's needing to be addressed. And it's something that I really wanted to talk about to help everybody in our industry just kind of get a better understanding. Because I think people, when you say the skills gap, I think people get it and they kind of understand it. Um, but let's talk really about and put some definition around like sure. what what is it and what does it look like because sure. as we were talking about earlier that it's kind of why was you came into being was to help yeah well it's definitely was his passion and he wants to impact the tech talent gap that's out there but just to give you an idea uh, last year there were over 450,000 wow. computer science jobs posted and less than 45, so less than 10%, 45,000 students graduating from institutions with computer science degrees. Okay. So when you take that and add to it the growing need for technology, for software developers, cybersecurity folks, data science, data analysts, I mean, this is at the core of every business function anymore. Right, yeah. Um, it, it's compounded. Yeah. Uh, and it's costing organizations, according to Glassdoor last year, if you do the math and what it, you know, the, the uh, formula for figuring out what it costs you to not have someone in a right. PC, based on that formula, that it's estimated over $21 billion in lost revenue last year Wow. to those empty seats with 263,000 jobs Damn. open. So um, you look at that and then you have 
competitively speaking, it's interesting. A lot of I hear from what different people within the HR yeah. business units um, that they're, they're paying competitive salaries and they're still losing people. And um, how does that work, right? Because these people have the luxury of choosing to be where they want to be, doing what they want to do. Okay. So, so when you look at um, CB Insights recently did a, a, a study and it said that uh, in first and second position, depending on who you ask, can all change. Third is always how much money they make. But the reason people join an organization or leave is primarily because of culture and costs. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to pick where I want to be because it's something I believe in. Yeah. Given all apples are, you know, apples to apples in terms yep. of pay. I want, and culture can be where you live, yep. the city, the lifestyle, the organization, believing in what you're doing, what you stand for, all of those things in combination are making a big difference. So and it's competitive. Yeah. Well, I think, and Trisha is so funny. Thank you again, Trisha, for hanging out with us in this conversation. Because it, Thanks, Trisha. It, because you're there, I keep thinking about your situation and your job. Trisha and I know each other pretty well. And um, you, yeah, I, I won't, you know. Talk too much about it, but let me just say that Trisha totally understands what you're talking oh, about yeah, and yeah. Uh, where, where she's at. Yeah, <laughs> it's a challenge. Um, and, and so now, when you interview folks, you know, this goes back to the good to great and getting people in the right seats on the right bus sort of thing. Yeah, you, you don't have to, because of the way that the industry is changing, um, you have to show that you have a not just a profi an aptitude but a proficiency right. in that skill. So you have organizations like Google that are no longer requiring degrees, and in an effort to get more people in this in this right, position. yeah, to fill all those empty seats. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, but now you can interview folks that are a great fit and have none of those skills, and train them. Yeah. Into it, you can you can train a someone who has zero uh, knowledge of being a developer and go from zero to sixty in thirteen weeks or ten. On the really tight side, it's quick as eight weeks. Wow. But 13 weeks is the average, and they get through the program, and in a couple months, they can be uh, onboarded as part of even the educational process. Okay. And so, okay, so I'm sure some folks might be hearing that and thinking, uh uh, you can't be like a full stack developer and understand all of that stuff yeah. in that short period of time. But yeah. is, um, yeah, the average boot camp. If you okay. Google any boot camp, most of them are offered live. They're not offered online like ours, but yeah. um, they they are all 13 to 33 weeks, depending on whether it's a rigid program, part-time, where you're doing it once a week, or if it's a full-time, intense program. Okay. It's a very average industry standard. And so do people come in with some sort of tech savvy, or have you had... You know, do they need it or no? Or? No, you're talking about software developers. No, um, certainly an aptitude. Right, right. I say, you know, you need to not be in love with math, but have an algebra level aptitude for or okay. understanding of it. Yeah. Um, and that's only because when you start getting into the more complicated type of programming, there's some formulas involved. In right. It moving things around but beyond that it's really not hard and frankly even if you, you want to just learn how to do that formula you don't have to love all of math but so anybody can do that yeah um, we, when you talk about cybersecurity, there are some prerequisites uh, so it's okay. a little bit more complicated yeah um and data science not at all so what's really interesting is in fact i recently was working with a, a client who the, the management the board of directors in particular uh, needed to have Data science for dummies, okay, um, and cybersecurity for dummies. Packaged, we were able to pull out just the courses from the entire learning path that they needed and package that for them. Okay, so that they could not only manage their organizations better and know what the expectations are, but even to insulate the board members from making some mistakes that former secretaries of state have done with emails and, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, those things. Yeah, yeah, you know, those little things. We don't get political don't think, here, so it's okay. We'll yeah, just, you, know, you wouldn't we'll think you have to it. teach it. But, but actually <laughs> understanding the, the fundamentals yeah. makes a big difference in the hows and whys, not so much just learning uh, don't send email, but 
now I know why I can right. or can't send this particular email. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, and it's just the basic stuff. But let me just let me just like build a little bit of an aside here. You mentioned that you're able to just sort of pull out the elements that made it really easy for them. Sure. So from a designing and a developing standpoint, everybody, that just goes to show how important it is for us to continue to build content that you can do that with, because I'm sure you're going to run into that as well. And I think everybody's pretty much doing that these days on that when developing content is that it's much more segmented to where you can do that. Mm -hmm. But I think there's some legacy courses and things out there and maybe not everybody is. So for those of you that are building stuff for your companies and building that e-learning and building that digital content, even if it's classroom content, when you're designing it, segment it because this kind of stuff it comes up a lot. Absolutely. I mean as as an entrepreneur and someone who has been involved in startups for twenty five years, twenty eight years now. Um, <laughs> shh, don't tell me. Just numbers. our secret. <laughs> um, it's important to build anything with the ability to pivot as you learn what you don't know, right? You yeah. start something with an idea because you believe it's going to be successful. Otherwise, why would you start it? Yep. But you don't know everything you need to know about it until you build it. So if you can compartmentalize those learnings and mo make them modular in, in that you can deconstruct and reconstruct them, it certainly removes some of the heavy lifting if it's yeah. not working on the next project because you can take with it. And so one of the things, in fact, that I'm really impressed with, Chris Coleman is the president here, and mm -hmm. he, he's the brains behind the, the brawn of our technology. Okay. Um, everything, it's it, there's continuity. All of the courses are taught, delivered, um, and trained in the exact same way. So okay. when you take any piece from any program and put it back together, there's nothing lost and it makes okay. it a better user experience. So if you're building your brand for your organization and you're training your salespeople, for example, and you want to talk about yeah. that, understanding how those um, pieces, when, they're, when and if there is a change, Still come back together. That consistency is so continuity. important. And the continuity of everything and making sure that everything fits. Mm -hmm. It is definitely uh, it's definitely something that we talk about a lot. But um, I think one of the frustrating things for creative people, and I'll, I'll I say this up to myself, and just because I know a lot of you out there struggle with the same thing. It can be a little bit stifling on your creativity when there's one way you come up with that one way to, to get that sort of continuity to try to find ways where you can add your creativity inside of those that framework and those boundaries that are in place gets a little bit harder as things like that go along. I'm sure that, that there's a time that that might be the case, but one of the ways that you might consider if you're in that position um, framing it from the beginning is with the, don't don't frame it in so tight. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, don't pick the colors of the walls when you're putting up the beams. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. okay. So consider this might be an area where we, we want more flexibility and so build the framework for that to allow for that flexibility. What that means is when you do it in the future and you take that frame, you've got that framework means you have more work involved because you didn't build it out that far. Right. But just make a decision on which parts and pieces need to be developed to the point of rinse and repeat. Gotcha. And yep. then back out from Yeah, there. what are the easy things you can sort of automate and not worry about but and then know. be creative within that exactly. framework and that space. Right. That's excellent advice for a lot of different things. Hey Craig, how's it going? It's producer Craig, he jumps in with me and uh, manages the chat room when he can. He's a busy guy. So, thanks. Uh, thanks, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Keep everybody in line, will you, Craig? It's a totally new setup, and so I'm just trying to you know, get into the groove here. So I have a question for you. Yeah. So I've recently started asking um, people, when I'm talent development leaders in particular, when I'm speaking with them about WAS, um, do they think or do they see a potential opportunity in the future or, or the need for a specific role inside organizations that is solely there to address tech talent development as opposed to traditional talent development. Because as we know, the business unit 
of tech talent is very different from the way that everybody else learns. They don't want to talk to anybody. They prefer to do things online. They want to do it in the dark. Yeah. Uh, they want to wear With the a pizza and a, and a Red Bull. And, and, their, that, and their earphones on, right? Is that so a the really bad different. stereotype? Yeah. <laughs> <But I> just... <laughs> I'm one of them, but um, the culture is different. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing that is unique from other business units. But more importantly, they require continuing education because, mm -hmm. for example, that tech talent gap, one of the st studies showed that 16, uh, I'm sorry, more than 80% of people who leave leave because they're looking for more skills. Ah, okay. And if you're in tech and you don't stay up, you will become irrelevant very quickly. And okay. So it, the companies need to be able to pay for it and offer that. So having somebody in that role where that's their job all the time is my question. Do you think that'll ever happen? Or I is don't it gonna know. call on us to figure out Yeah, I mean I think that it's always based on the business, right? So we have a lot of conversations around um, how do we better understand the business to help the business figure that out? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and Craig, you're right. <laughs> he said, for anybody just listening to the audio, Craig Seibert's in the chat, and he says, did she just say training shouldn't be in HR? That's what I heard. No. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, I've heard that from a few people <laughs> since they got into this line of work. Um, there are challenges, I understand. But then you have yeah. the, now, but now you're getting it from both ends because now you have a CTO, CIO, who thinks you don't get it. I'm not giving that to you, but that's your that's your skill. Right is bringing it so if they can work together and communicate what the skills are that you all need to go out and package and deliver in a way that they right. say they need it delivered. That's great, but I'm hearing that's not really working either. They're not trusting you any more than perhaps other people in other units that you're dealing with, um, and so they're trying to take it on themselves, and it it's not effective. Yeah, so what is it, um, and, and maybe this is not a good question to ask, but it just dawned on me, so I'll ask anyways, if whether you know or not. Um, like, where does the budget currently come out of to do this type of training, or where should it? Because I think that's the real, that ends up being the battle, right? It's it Should it come out of the product budget? Should it come out of the HR budget? You know, yeah. is it, is no, it, it professional it, development budget, whatever? I'm sure it will vary from organization to organization. Yeah. The CTO, CIO should be responsible for helping uh, dictate what that budget should be. Okay. And be very involved in um, communicating, and uh, it's because they're not you're not just career pathing these folks. You're right. organizationally setting up the infrastructure, or whether it's internal tech or external tech for clients. Right. You have to be competitive, yeah. so you have to keep the technology. So as they're considering what the, the if there's a legacy system that they're going to transition out of, for example, in two years, what are they doing to set themselves up for success with that? And it has to happen together. Um, right. Who whether the budget is given to the talent folks or to the it's going to be whoever has to make the decision. Yeah. On that training. Yeah. Whoever ends up having to. Uh carry the outcome that has to be presented at the quarterly review meeting. That's right. Uh. <laughs> right. And it's interesting because, you know, um, the the talent, uh, what do I want to say, the talent development people are aligning themselves with one agenda. Uh, HR hiring is aligning themselves with another, CTO, CIO, another. And so yeah. depending on who I'm talking to, they're all struggling with the challenge of tech talent gap, but they're feeling it in different ways. Yeah. So I find I have to change the focus of the conversation. Okay. But the solution is still exactly the same. Yeah. It still comes together with we gotta get people educated. We gotta figure we it out. just have to keep offering them the skills that they need. And unfortunately, um, a MOOC isn't gonna do it. Right? Uh, most tech people are used to just going on YouTube. You right? They're yeah. Just go if you want to learn find themselves. Yeah, a new bit of software, if you want a new tutorial. Right. I just did that for the Unreal Engine. Somebody mentioned that they're doing a tutorial yeah. uh, for learning and development people on the, it's a workshop on the, using the Unreal gaming engine. And I had forgotten about that one. I didn't even know it still existed. Yeah. And so, uh, and I, I asked him, I said, well, does it run on a Mac? Because I only use Mac stuff, because most of that gaming stuff back when I was into that stuff was a PC only. Yeah. yeah, it was so you had to run it on that. And he said, oh yeah, so I did. I did a little tutorial. It was a good 30 minute tutorial. I went through and I did the Hello World, uh, downloaded the whole thing and went through the whole, and so I was like, oh, okay, I remember it. The interface still kind of looked the same right. from back then. And 
whatnot. Uh, it also kind of freaked me out because I'm like, wow, there's a lot to learn. I don't, you know, right. I, I'm too old to learn. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna have to hire somebody. And, and that's not there. See, and they're not. They are like we talked about this voracious learners. Yeah. In that space, um, and the reason that a MOOC or a YouTube uh, solution is only going to be part of the equation is because yeah. there's no guarantee that when they're, it's not project based, there's no grading kind of, you know, so to speak, like you yeah. find in an institution, there's no certification. Right. Um, and there's no guarantee that when, if everybody goes to wherever they want to go, they're going to come back with the same skills. Right. Well, this, is, this brings up an interesting point, too, and it's something that I've talked about for a long time. So our conversations often, um, start to lean towards the higher ed side of the world too and that particular machine has just become the standard right and getting a degree and and you know and, and it, whether you've got a master's in IT or CIS I guess is the appropriate sure. term for it I remember CIS 111 uh, but that's a whole other story um, and you know do people worry about that? I guess when they're when they're coming to a WAJU or when a company is trying to spin up their people, obviously the the end game is we don't really care. We just need them to be smart. We need them to be able to do this work and understand this technology, right? right? And so um, you know programs like you know WAJU and and the uh, boot camps and things like that mm -hmm. to me are so much more well suited to IT training and to basically a lot of things, right? Hyper focus, a, a lot of time devoted to actually doing the work, not just reading about it and having tests. Mm -hmm. But how do you guys combat, I mean, not combat's not the right word, but you know, how do you help people understand that, hey, having a certificate or a degree or having gone through a boot camp style program is has value, right? Everybody values that piece of paper so much. So, so. not so much anymore. Okay. Um, the certification, it, it's a few, at the end of the day, it's a piece of paper. It's project work. So right. for if a good boot camp. Now, this is when we talk about boot camps, so you all know, it's specifically relating to somebody coming out the streets and going through the entire program. Okay. Versus, which we do, yep. but versus where we're upskilling incumbents incumbents okay. and giving them the new skills necessary for whatever the migrations are gotcha right that yep. sort of thing or for that matter if if someone has been tasked with hiring 300 people and it's hard to find 300 with those specific skills find the people you like and just give them the new skills that they need yeah because maybe they have some engineering that sort of but they just need this language this framework whatever that is. so that's where we yeah. get into some customization right um so there's the difference between the boot camp and uh, upscaling, you're scaling it. Right. Yep. Um, that said, in every case, when you go through any kind of, at least with us, any kind of a program, you, you're going to do a project which yep. demonstrates your proficiency. Okay. Um, and often, when we're working with clients, it's really fun. It doesn't happen as much as I like, but um, mm. I, I will always offer to make that project something that the organization needed done anyway. Ah, okay. So if it's um, and and the whole co if there's a cohort, for example, as opposed to just one or two employees, right? Um, not only are they learning how to do it, building it for the company, on the company time or whatever that is, anyway. Yep. Uh, but then they can go out and manage it well because they built it from the ground up. Yeah. No one wants to step in to somebody else's work because they don't know where they left off. There's a lot of challenges with that. So if they built it from the very beginning. It just makes everything more efficient, more effective. Yeah. So the market. The, yes, that this kind of takes us kind of back around a little bit to sort of that that skills gap that we're trying to address and figure it out. So mm -hmm. there is, you know, onboarding somebody into a tech role in a boot camp that's maybe brand new to it, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, and then there is that upskilling mm -hmm. aspect of it, and then there's also the um, educating executives that maybe they're not even supposed to do the work but they want to understand, understand it to enough it well. yeah to be smart about you know the, how that impacts their business, the business and how exactly. it impacts the company and and you know things as like data it, science right yeah, yeah. Are, do you really understand all of the analytics that are behind what's working and not what's not on your e-commerce 
right. side of your business, that sort of thing. Yeah, and so when we talk about the skills gap, it, when you think about it like that and all of the different elements of this gap in knowledge, mm -hmm. really, it's knowledge and skills, that paints a much broader picture, right? I mean, sure, there's not a, enough IT professionals or IT people graduating to fill the jobs, but then there's just this knowledge gap in our culture altogether mm -hmm. that needs a lot of help. Yeah, yeah, it'll change, I mean, over the next decade or so. Um, when us old folks start to get out of the way, <laughs> yeah, and man. these young whippersnappers come up who were born with chips in their head, yeah, you get it. Um, okay, well, but in the meantime, a, yeah, well, I mean, let's, meantime, yeah, let's talk about that. Sorry, I'm totally cutting you off. Uh, <laughs> that was all I had to say. That's all I had to say about that. Okay, good. Um, it, it's people talk about millennials, right, mm -hmm. being like this digital generation, mm -hmm. and I think we joke about it quite a bit. Um, I've met enough millennials to know that it's a totally false stereotype that just because they know how to stare at their phone 24-7 and Snapchat or Instagram doesn't mean that they have any sort of real IT acumen and no. tech smarts, not by any stretch no, of the imagination. No, but they're less intimidated or threatened by it. Right, okay, so there's that bonus of, of that stereotype exactly. and, and who they are, and that's good. Um, but they still need the education. They too. still have to learn it. Yeah, which is why I think mm -hmm. we'll see more people going into the field because they're less threatened um, by the idea of, and it doesn't to them anymore. It doesn't look like the guy who's in his garage, you know, still living with mom, trying to code. Is there that it's, stigma anymore? Still, really? Do, do in our, still? that's what I'm saying. Not to them. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. But so the reason you don't see as many people. Although it is changing, yeah. Uh, between people coming out of the military, moms going back into the workforce, we're seeing a lot of women coders, um, and you know, after like children grow up, and right. nesters, that sort of thing, and then mid-career changes where people are saying, "I, I want to go this direction." So it is happening. Okay. But um, I think the biggest changes we'll see will probably not be for another ten years, and we have to be addressing the challenges associated with that enormous gap. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just them. it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. I mean you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's like um and, and I think you guys probably have been to different events and heard keynote speakers say every business is a tech business. Like okay? you know there's there's the tech industry, but really every business is a technology business. And you hear about it every now and then, and like to hear the CEO of Starbucks, for example, it's oh, it's the coffee company, and to hear the CEO stand up and give a, a keynote and say, no, we're a technology company, or or other companies that you you traditionally, I think it was the Under Armour CEO said that once oh, recently at yeah. a at an event a few yeah. years back. I remember hearing about it, and he was like, no, no, we're a technology company. It's like everybody has to be a technology company these yeah. days. Yeah, and I'm curious because I've not sat on your side of the desk, right? So I would love to know, even from our um, our audience today, what they're hearing, feeling, or experiencing with regard to the push for addressing the needs of the tech talent. Because, you know, is it an afterthought, or is anybody really proactively saying we need to get ahead of this? Yeah because it's going to sneak up and bite us in the ass if we don't. Well, let's ask. We've got a few people hanging out with us. What do you guys think? Craig, Tricia, Jack, if you're still on? Yeah, and are you, are you here? If you are hearing something, is it coming from um, from the CEO side, from CIO side, from the techs themselves? What are you hearing? Yes, Tricia says she's, uh, she's proactively saying it, but no one in the org is uh. thinking it. You're ahead of your time, my dear. That's your, you're smart. You're in a very unique situation, Tricia. So um, I, I think you're the <laughs> you're going to be the unicorn in this conversation. <laughs> Craig says, "Can we put it into a formal question to the group?" Absolutely. That's a good idea. Oh, did you drop that into the? Uh, Oh, let me get to that question in a second, Tricia. Let's 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 roll through this real quick. What do you mean? Um, put it into a formal question to the group. You mean uh, let's post it later to the larger the group at large and see what kind of feedback we get. I think that's what you're saying, but I'm just yeah. looking just for a little clarity. Yeah, yeah, because uh, when you think about the, it's constantly changing. So right. about the time we figure it out, it's going to be different anyway. Yeah. 
So that means we need to stay on the front end of all of that. And does that mean that we need to have more of these kinds of conversations? Right. Should we be doing a weekly show, for example, on yeah. this? Or should we be going to conferences that have a breakout session specifically for tech talent development? Yeah. Uh, as opposed to some of the more broader subjects, which are also important. But right. do we need to include this? But That's it's huge. Thing. Yeah. And so along those lines, right? So you, to your point, does there need to be a person in the it's business right. that, right, back to right, it goes right back to it. Does there need to be a new career or a new job title yeah. where somebody owns that responsibility and is responsible for it? So, um, so Tricia, re-ask re -ask the question. Sorry. Um, you re -ask the question. What, what? My question? <laughs> Oh dear Lord! No, yeah, which one now? No, my, my you totally is, lost this, Trisha. Yeah. Sorry. No, my question is. Well, I don't know what hers was. Oh yeah, sorry. All right, you guys are filling up. Can we put it? Um, is that question, Trisha? Is that the one you're talking about? Can we put it into a formal question to the group? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Put the. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a, a night. We'll put together like a survey. Yes. Okay. Yes. Look at the question. The question yeah. that you asked. Yeah. So where where um, was it? Who was responsible for that? I think that's where we kind of went to on it. There's, yeah. Yeah. What well, What are you hearing? In what your, are you hearing? Are you getting the pushback. That sort of thing from folks. On yeah. That. What is it? What does it look like? I mean, how can I help? Yeah. Because uh, I I know I've got something that people need. Right. Um, and I know I can because this is a startup also. You know. This this organization is only one year old. Yeah, yeah. Um, And Mr. Wozniak is incredibly open and supportive to whatever it's going to take to get this done. We're working with K through 12 programs. We're doing a lot of. We have white label programs with uh, colleges where they're offering our curricula through their institutions for their degree okay, programs. Okay, right, so right. they're accredited. Wow. That's how good the curriculum is. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, lots of. Lots of different angles and different ways you can take something that like becomes this. the question. What do you need? Yeah, like Tell what? Tell me what you need. How can I create something that helps? Right. And is it um, like are those non-tech people that need to be reskilled? Are those maybe um, you know? I'm trying should, to think of who those we, people would be. Should we be you know? educating CEOs or CIOs on the, the challenges and right. the solutions that? result from yep. addressing those challenges or should we because I, I you know like Trish is saying if she's not getting the support she needs she sees it because she's on the front lines yeah. of that war oh she, like, you have no idea how she but sees if she's it, not yeah. if nobody else in the organization <laughs> is feeling it because it's all because she's saving the world one employee at a time right? uh -huh. and she's insulating them from it then they're not feeling that pain then they're not going to give her the support so maybe yeah. they need to feel it but that's tough. So it that's is. Like, you know, what do you do? Who's going to jump on the grenade? So, it is. It is. It's so um, funny. And, and Tricia, I will absolutely chat with Lisa uh, more when we're done here, and I'll, I'll get back to you on uh, on that particular and question. And I'd be very happy to chat with you also, Tricia. Yeah, yeah. I'll get Offline you. Offline anytime. Yeah, I'll get you two hooked up. Um, but let, let me just ask this question really quick, not to derail us too much here, but the 13 to 33 weeks, how do you sell this to the execs who want them to produce and contribute day one? It's not an option. Day one isn't, they, they can produce day one though, could be 60 days out for the recruiter, 90 days, 120 days being, 90 to 120 being the average to fill a seat. Really? Yeah, so it's going to take you longer to have a recruiter find someone with those skills. Uh, and then hire someone that you like, that likes you, that won't leave. That's a great. Oh, okay, that totally reframes it in my yeah, mind. Like it's different. That, that's why I'm saying this. You dealing with this strategy is very different from the challenges facing organizations traditionally. Okay, there's that light bulb. Yeah. yeah. So there is the alternative, or the the thing that we're fighting against is that recruiting process. And so what you're saying is if... And it's less expensive to train them. There actually. you go, right? So if it's it more expensive to go through this entire hiring process to find that one right person with the right skills mm -hmm. that you like, that's in the right location, that's, you know, all, all, the, things, the, all, yeah. the, all the stuff, yeah. but it's a lot easier and you have a much larger pool of just smart people right. that can learn fast, willing to work, that are just that are, that 
believe in your culture and cause. They, they believe in the culture and the cause. So they're not going to jump ship and leave for a, a bigger paycheck somewhere. There you go. They want to be where they are. Right? And so you land those employees That's quickly. Right. And they stay. Put them through the program. That's right. You're still coming ahead of the game. That's right. Then waiting to hire that perfect unicorn employee that right. every recruiter tries to find for a company. Exactly. And it's important to note, too, that that is only under the, the condition or circumstance of meeting junior developers. Right. In the event of an engineer, a senior, mid-level senior engineer who just yeah. is missing a, a framework language. They're right. going from okay. React to Angular, for example. Not it's, that I know what that it's a, is. But. Me neither. I pretend like I sound really smart when I say it's so um, Angular. Yeah. What? So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a thing. It goes back to those bones and building the house, right? Uh, but then, but then it dictates what what language in that framework they need to learn. So, or how to learn okay. those languages are different in each of those frameworks is how I should say. It. So that said, if you have someone that again meets all of those wonderful criteria but just is missing that language that's even a faster quicker proposition right and certainly a lot less expensive than an entire yeah that learning, upskilling piece learning yeah, yeah. So looking at a week or two wow and okay just see. yeah i mean by the time you're done going they're done filling all the paperwork in hr and doing the onboarding process they've already learned what they need to know they, that's how fast go. yeah, yeah. That seems to be the most important thing these days, at least in my experience, is that that, that culture and cause and that mm -hmm. fit of personality yeah. is more important than anything. And then yeah. just train them on everything else. And you couldn't do that before. I mean, we, we see it in apprenticeship programs. Yeah. Right? If you want to be a plumber, you want to be a truck driver, you want in a lot of blue collar type positions where yep. you find a kid who just really wants to do it and they'll work for beans and they'll learn it and eventually. Yep. It's the same concept. Find the people you like, who like you, who are going to be loyal and a part of the vision and the mission, and teach them the skills. It's a lot yeah. harder to change someone's version of a, a culture fit yeah. than it is to just teach them the skill. Right. And yeah, it paradigm just, shift it does, in the way we hire. It is. It's really, but it's. I guess it would also be. It's a huge paradigm shift in the way the business runs. And so those are conversations that need to happen too, I would imagine, with the executive levels exactly. to understand yeah. that this shift needs to happen and that they need to think about their their culture and their cause. They, they need one or mm -hmm. else this is the kind of churn and it's going to impact their recruiting and on and on and on and on. Sure. And they're so going to the conferences important. that are telling them that. They're being taught that it's important to create cause and culture mission statements and vision statements and communicating that effectively across the organization. I'm sure you all have heard it. Oh, yeah, but a lot of it's You've been told to go teach it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. a checkbox. Yeah. They're just like, oh, I need a, I mean, we need a mission statement. Believe me, I've sat yeah, in these it's meetings. It's as simple as the kid coming out of school. I, mean, I know, I know. Sometimes, though, it really is as simple as a kid coming out of school who dreamed of working for NASA his whole life. Yeah. It's not some, it's, it's the, the vision of the brand. It could, there's other reasons that people, but they love it enough that they want to be there, and that's right. what, and that's a lot easier to find. Again, yeah. Um, and if I, I had one person, the only objection that I've had come up, which was very reasonable as well, what if I get them in and they quit? Right. right? Yeah. They're just going to use us for the because you could post the job opening and say free training uh. and get a lot of people to apply. So that's, I mean, it's an easy fix. You just have them sign a work, a, a contract, an agreement. And yeah, that they're going to stay. If they leave early, yeah, if they leave early, they owe the money. Well, that's it. It's like uh, paying want. paying for a master's degree or offering up some sort of um, tuition reimbursement. That's been around same for thing. a long time. It's exactly the same thing, and it shouldn't be such a big deal. If but anything, they use it to move up in the organization. Right. And there's more, they're more endearing, they're more loyal as a result of that yeah. kind of support. Yeah. Getting in there as well. Awesome. Mark Ayler, good to see you, my friend. You and I have not talked in a long time. Thanks for dropping in. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's at Amazon. Am I, am I allowed to say that? God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but so is Myra, and you, you know Myra, so it's yeah. all Yeah, well, Myra's how we got introduced. That's right. So it's all, it's all good. How are you? <laughs> Trust me, my daughters and my wife are on that. I don't have to do it to make that happen to support your cause. So it's all right. <laughs> we're working on. I'm, I'm, oh, I, I'm, we're working on offering AWS, and we've got actually one um, client out of Flagstaff that is doing some programming. They're using our curricula to offer 
programs and jobs. Nice. And workforce development stuff, but AWS is part of that program. We do have some introductory AWS stuff, so. Yay. Awesome. We want more. Yeah, we got it. So you guys we keep that happening. So, yeah. all right, so we're, we're down to about 15 minutes left of our usual time for this conversation. And we've hit on some really important topics, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, a lot of information. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about. As we yeah. already discovered yeah, that, you know, over. right? We've only hit some of the elements, but um, let's see. So there's another question in here. Um, so, okay, Trish wants to know, why is this shift so scary? So, <laughs> did you ever read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Oh, yeah, all we can do is speculate, but yes, oh my so gosh, who change, moved my cheese? <laughs> change is always scary because it comes with the unknown. Yeah. And I think that what makes it less scary for me, having been a problem solver my whole life, is I, right. I can't wait to look at dead, you know, look the bull in the eyes. I, I want to know what's broken. I want to fail fast. Yeah. So I just do it in a way that it's like going crazy in a padded room. It's a little bit safer. Um, yeah. And so with little tests, little pilots, little lots of conversations like this with folks, even as I help you know grow this organization, I'm being a part of um, solving the problem for so many other companies. It, it becomes less scary when you are calculated. Yeah, and create the margin for error in that process. It's not nearly as scary anymore. It, it is. I would think that um, I would think that in this day and age, with things changing and things happening so fast, yeah. that people would be much more comfortable with that kind of um, you know, personality is the right word or uh, sensitivity <laughs> to change, right? My we, DNA. Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. be so freaked out by it anymore. Um, you know, because but when I start to think about it, I like to think of myself as somebody that loves change as well. And, but there are those things, though, in life that I don't like change so much. So I, I kind of split down the middle, you know. I, but every once in a while when I feel myself resisting some sort of change, I'm like, oh, this is how people feel on the tech side of things when I'm totally psyched about all the change and I'm good with it. This must be what they feel like when I'm not feeling like that. Right, right. So I recently read an article that, and I'm probably going to flash this, but you'll get the gist of it. Yeah. Um, a, a neuroscientist was being interviewed about the makeup of innovation, innovators, and why some people are more prone to, to it and others aren't. Yeah. And what's interesting is that when we are creating, when we are innovating, in it, this is anybody in any business, at any job, it doesn't matter. You're solving problems at some point. Yep. Um, there is a dose of serotonin and um, forget the other that is emitted that is kind of a high. That's you know, rush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we want more of that. Yeah. What we resist at the same time is it's uh, we are pre genetically predisposed to fear change because routines are safe. Yeah, yes. We've learned that if I if I look both ways, I won't get hit by a car, right? Yeah. Or I go home at this time, or you know, those routines from our experience tell us we're safe, even though safety is really an illusion yeah. anyway, right? Well, it's the lizard brain it working, is, it right? Is. It's the lizard brain. So so finding the balance between. Um, pushing the envelope in a safe enough way yeah. becomes the secret to, I think, truly making dramatic changes in our personal lives and our professional lives for the people around us. And it, it's a delicate balance. It is. Well, this is an interesting tie-in, and this does take us all the way kind of back around because we do simulations for training all the time. And then a big part of educating people and teaching them is putting them in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. So to know they don't, you're not going to break it. Like I know that's one of the first things, you know, yeah. you know, older family members, when you're teaching them how to use an iPad for the first time or their first cell phone, right? It's right. The first thing you have to tell them is don't worry, you're not going to break, break it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, so it, funny. You can't, you can't, yeah. you can't touch something and break it. It'll be fine. If you throw it up against the wall because you're mad, yeah, that's a problem. But just, just touching the wrong button isn't going to break anything. And that's why when we do brainstorming sessions, I wish I, I don't like that phrase at all because it's so used, but when we yeah. get into innovating and rolling up our sleeves, same thing. Anybody, any company you use that is a professional to come in and help, yeah, will do the, the, the best, their best work at.
creating a safe environment for everyone to yeah. think out loud and not be afraid that their jobs are in jeopardy or someone's going to think they're stupid for saying it. Right, right. Right? Yep, yep. Those, setting that foster. stage, yeah, is always so critical. And <laughs> not so stupid. My answer, my answer for you and anybody else who whoever hears this would be create safe ways to test everything. Yeah. And yeah, then you and then even then when you've tested it, know that when you launch it, there's still going to be another new stuff that comes up yeah. and create margin for error for the new stuff. Right. When is that? I mean, things just as simple as doing a live stream like this. It's scary. I know a lot of people. I got used to it by just doing it, and I knew that I needed to just do it over and over again. And I mean, this was back when yeah. when live streaming on the internet and everything first became a thing, like 2014 or something, when it first started. Yeah, but what's funny is you happening. told me before we started this that it became such a routine for you. Going back to that, yeah. that you were uncomfortable when you stopped. Doing when I it. stopped doing it, you're right. Yeah, and that's one of those change things where I was like, hi. Oh, you know, it's like well, I missed it. Yeah. You know, it was, and so, um, so that's why we're here right now, everybody. You know, any and, other questions? And, you know, yeah, you guys drop some questions in there. I do have one other question though. While people are thinking about um, dropping stuff in, we talked a little bit about your, um, you know, that your background being so good and what kind of brought you into this space and having that sort of innovator's mind, mm -hmm. right? How does that play into, you know, what you do, and do you recognize it in others, and do you think it can be trained? Okay, that's a lot of questions. I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I, so, uh, what was the first one? Uh, how, can you see it in others, like when, oh. you, when, you're, when you're doing Absolutely. the work that you do? I see it in everyone. Okay. I see it in everyone all the time, just some people, are more willing to take the risk of maybe monetizing that idea. Okay. But we're all problem solving at different times throughout our days, throughout yeah. our weeks, throughout our lives. If you have kids, you're definitely going to learn how to problem solve. <laughs> Come to the territory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if life worked out perfectly every day, all day, then we wouldn't have to problem solve. But stuff True. goes sideways. Yeah. You know, someone either cuts you off and you have to course for after you. You lose your job and you have to figure out what's next or a relationship or whatever and it's all about solving that all the time and so I guess it maybe it's not necessarily training people on it maybe it's not a skill maybe it's helping them just see it differently maybe that's yeah, part just, of the knowledge and like just knowing that hey you can do this you can yeah. be like this and because I know so a lot of people may have gone out and Googled your name and seen a lot of the things that you've done and they're probably saying to themselves, wow, I've had great ideas. How come I didn't do that? Sure. You know, what does it take? To I hear it all the time. Right? All that. All the time. All that, right? Because you work with other entrepreneurs and innovators and people, inventors wanting to do this kind of stuff and they, they don't, is it that fear? And is it, you know, what, what do you find in those folks? We're only afraid of what we don't know. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's a lack of knowledge. And we, we both bonded over the fact that we're both voracious learners before we did this today. Yeah. Um, and that lends itself to being a problem solver because as you learn, you're able to solve more problems. So I think it just right. it ultimately just goes back to if you if you don't if you're facing a challenge in your life professionally or personally, and you really feel like you've hit a wall and it's an ending and it could be as bad as wanting to end your life. The reality is you just don't know something that you need to know to get past it. And it could be a reflection of, of, of who you are and some changes you need to make and, and solving problems there. It could be circumstances. It could be other people in your life. It could be simple knowledge. Go Google. You know, I'm not saying yeah. WebMD everything, but, you know, <laughs> That's more Dr. Scary Dr. Than Dr. Google else. is pretty smart, but, yeah. you know, get a second opinion. Um, but yeah. uh, I remember when the Internet first became an an option for me and just dying that I had the which originally was just like an encyclopedia online. No, right, yeah. <laughs> but oh I had my. all this information available and I could get an answer to any question. Yeah. I know what to do if I know the answer. I just don't know the answer yet. Yeah. Once so, you get it, yeah. So. When I hear no, I don't I was on the big idea with Donnie Deutsch many, okay. many years ago on CNBC. And I told him, and he went on to quote it in his book, so I'm really proud of this. But when I hear no, I don't hear no. I drove my mother crazy, let me tell you. What I hear is not that way. Because uh. I'm sure 
there's got to be a way to do this. There you That's go. My philosophy. What a fantastic way to wrap up this conversation, I think. That was fun. As we reach the top of the hill. really fun. This is great. There's so much more for us to break apart here, though, and figure this out and to maybe deep dive into some of these areas a little bit yeah. because um, you've kind of opened up my mind and drawn this picture of this skills gap in a way that it would be fun to workshop it with everybody. Yeah, wow. I wonder yeah. if we could. It would be fun to workshop huh. it and have everybody kind of talk about what where the pain because it's different <laughs> in different organizations, right? Right. That's so, the hardest thing for me when I walk into a new client's you know, do some consulting and whatnot. Right. It's never the same solution. You can you can't just say, I've got this thing I'm just gonna drop in. Exactly. Right? It's always whether it's getting helping them pick out a new tech or helping them build a new training program or a management leadership program. It's always something very, very different. But the process to get to that solution is the same. Right. Right. So we should do that. Let's let's figure, figure that out. Process. Let's figure out what this workshop looks like and let's workshop it. Cool. I think it's I'm a down. great idea. So we can get up to four people on Crowdcast at a time, so we all don't have to be in the same place. Or we could bring a whole bunch of people into one location or multiple locations yeah. with some of the people that are in other states. You guys can bring your people together, and then maybe we can have each location in a video window, and then those people that can't be in one of those locations that still want to participate in the chat and watch the whole Yeah, depending on how many people say that they would want to participate. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We will you know figure why? it out. Because we're problem solvers. <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do. Man, this has been great. Thank you so fun. much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope you guys had a great time. Tricia, you've got so many great ideas and so many great questions, and I'm definitely going to have to chat with you offline after this. But uh, Mr. Ayler, thanks for hanging out today. Thanks for jumping in. Good to see you, my friends. And uh, Producer Craig, you're awesome as always. I didn't see... Uh, I didn't see who else was uh, who else was here. Maybe they probably just jumped in and jumped out. But anyways, you guys are great. I'm gonna be back here tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Not here, here. Not here, here. Yes, back in the <laughs> in headquarters, the B Schlinker headquarters <laughs> uh, of that office tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. I don't even know what we're talking about yet. Uh, no guests for Thursday and Friday, but uh, so we'll go back to the old school open forum and have some conversations. So. Maybe what we can do is a little recap of this and uh, get some other people involved in this conversation because I do think this is really, really important. And um, and it's something that we all deal with on a regular basis. So thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome. If you have any questions, reach out to us. That's another great question. Can people connect with you somewhere? I almost forgot that part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's lisa.lloyd at was-u.com. Maybe I'll take that in here. Yeah. Lisa. Lisa. Lloyd. Lloyd. At, at was-u. Make sure it's still U-O-Z. Yep. There we go. They can find you. And I'm sure they can find you on LinkedIn, too, and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa the, Lloyd on the LinkedIn. The Google will track you down. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on the innovation side, if you're more interested in, in having conversations around that. I'm not sure if that would make sense. And I'm not really doing that, but as mm -hmm. as, a, as a favor, I would. Um, it would be LloydMarketingGroup.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that I just might don't be have fun, too. A lot of time on I was going to say, wow, well, yeah, you're busy. But if you want to see the inventions and the Shark Tank, uh, oh, yeah. my Shark Tank videos there from season one and season two, the Donnie Deutsch video interview, okay. Dr. Phil interview, all those things, they're all on that website. So it's okay. LloydMarketingGroup.com if you want to check that out. Awesome. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Lisa, again, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for having me, and thank you all so much for being here. We will do this again, you guys, for sure. So we'll, uh, And I'll give you guys some feedback on, uh, on what happened today and any other questions that come up and when we're going to be doing it again. So take care, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.